The last part of, of the presentation will just be a description of the bonding procedure. And at this stage, as you guess, it will be very simple. On the tooth, and this checklist on the, on the screen is, is uh, available through our book uh, by Quintessence called Bonded Porcelain Restoration. It's a checklist for, for final cementation. I want just to show you a detail here of the list at the moment of surface conditioning for the final bonding. As you see on the tooth side, you just need, on the left side, you just need to roughen the adhesive and, and, and then do phosphoric etching. And roughen means micro sandblasting. If you don't have a micro sandblaster, a uh, diamond burr at very low speed uh, does the same work. On the porcelain, we will use hydrofluoric etching and a silen uh, as a chemical coupler. And, and this is true for all feldspatic porcelain. The best way to bond to a feldspatic porcelain is hydrofluoric etching, 10% um, for 90 seconds. Very important is then cleaning the porcelain, I will show you why, followed by the application of the chemical agent, the silen, and, and you want to heat treat the silen uh, after you place it on the tooth to allow the perfect evaporation of the solvent and finally apply a coat of adhesive resin and you can even load the composite into the veneer. Very important is really the, the cleaning. After etching, most feldspatic porcelain, after you etch and rinse with fluoric, hydrofluoric acid, you will see a very obvious whitish surface like that. This is not good. I don't have time to show you all the scanning electron microscopy and, and the studies, but I can tell you the white deposit must be eliminated. How do you do that? First, by brushing <coughs> with phosphoric acid um, and a micro brush, and finally placing the restoration in the ultrasonic bath for about one minute. And uh, in the ultrasonic bath, you want to take care to place the restoration in a gauze so it doesn't hit the glass and doesn't damage. You see the picture before and after cleaning. And uh, there is a myth out there that porcelain should be whitish after it is etched. This is not true. Porcelain should be uniform and dull like that, but it should not be whitish. If it is whitish like you see on the left, it means there is a deposit. It is a contamination salt that redeposit on the tooth after etching that needs to be eliminated absolutely. This will significantly alter the bone strength if it is not removed. Then the silen is applied, and as I told you, the silen after, after one application should be dried very well using a hair dryer, using a little oven. As you can guess, given my hair condition, uh, I don't have a hair dryer, so I have to use an, 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 an oven. Finally, the resin, a, a, a thin layer of adhesive resin is applied to the fitting surface. You don't need to thin it down, you just apply it, you don't pre-cure anything, and you can even load the composite. A regular light curing restorative composite is used, and you store it under the shield. And that's very important because you don't want the composite to pre-cure and, and, and you need these little pads with protective shield. The tooth surface will be simply roughened and with uh, micro blasting followed by etching. You can do a very thorough rinsing and drying followed by the application of the adhesive resin. And this is really an advantage because dentin is already sealed. So you don't need to, be, to worry about dehydration of dentin. This is the sealed dentin surface you see in, in, in yellow. And as you see, everything is micro sand blasted with a fine grain sand. You don't want to use 50 micron alumina, it's too aggressive. You want to lose, you want to use 30 micron aluminum oxide. And one example of a product that I use is called CoJet by 3MSP. It's a very fine sand that you can also use for intraoral repair, very useful. 
Then after rinsing and drying, the, the, the rest of the, the, the whole tooth surface can be etched, rinsed and dried again very thoroughly. You can use a little drop of alcohol without scrubbing. A little drop of alcohol will allow you to evaporate completely the water. And then so a very strong air blow is allowed because dentin is already sealed. And then you apply a coat of adhesive resin. You can put an extensive coat of adhesive resin without procuring, of course. Now you take the little restoration that you stored under your shield and you apply it to the tooth. It's already loaded with the regular light curing restorative uh, type material. Now, some restorative materials are a little too thick and you wanna make sure you make it a little thinner by simply heating up the material using a little oven, a little, a little uh, composite heater. Calcet by Adent is a good product to heat the composite so it becomes a little bit more flowable. We apply all the principles I have shown to you today. We apply to porcelain in the posterior teeth the same way. It's the same principle. It's an occlusal veneer. We use that all the time on endodontically treated tooth as an ultra-conservative approach to stabilize the cusp and reinforce the tooth. I didn't have time to show you today. I am using oscillating instruments that are so nice to allow a perfect sometimes subgengival preparation like this one in very good condition it doesn't cut the gengiva it is a one-sided instrument we use immediate dentin bonding on posterior teeth exactly the same way we use immediate dentin sealing in the anterior uh, um, and and you see the technique here described sometime you do it with rubber dam sometime you can't place rubber dam like in this case and you use all the uh, isolation means you can. You see that this endodontically treated tooth was first restored in the most, the deepest part with the glass nonomer and then a, a, a thin layer of composite to adhere to. Most of the dentin surface is sealed, and air blocked and light cured and again, and you see the sealed dentin before to take the impression, a very uh, unique preparation design. This will be the topic of a whole different lecture. I would be ha more than happy to, to give to the uh, Global Institute at, at another occasion. And this is the corresponding. We are studying extensively what's happening on posterior teeth with finite element, with simulation, with fatigue testing. There are lots of, of things that are in the pipeline and I will be more than happy to share more of the aesthetic on posterior teeth because right now we are at the end of this session and I want to tell, I want to thank you first for uh, attending tonight or today. I don't know what time it is in your country. Uh, those who want more about uh, this topic, we have a book, Bonded Porcelain Restoration. Those who want to visit Los Angeles, you are more than welcome to attend one of our uh, hands-on and lecture course. We have a course on June 16, 17 on anterior teeth and we have a course on July 14, 15 on posterior teeth with the hands-on. With this, I wanna conclude. I wanna thank you for your attention. You have our emails on the screen, Pascal and Michelle, and we wanna maybe have some questions at this stage. One question from uh, Takuya Sato. Uh, is there, if there is a composite resin filling in the tooth which we want to prepare for bonded porcelain restoration. How should we deal with it? In the anterior dentition, I tried to uh, briefly show you cases where, as you, you, you have seen, there are extensive class three restorations on the teeth and uh, class three fillings. And usually we try to replace these restorations, especially when they are older and you are not sure about them. We will try to replace them before we start, before we even take preliminary impression for the wax up. My recommendation is fix the palatal with composite as much as you can. Then you just ignore that these restorations are here. You can prep the proximal, proximal margins within these existing restorations as long as at the time of cementation you micro sandblast these surfaces you will be able to get a very good bond to these existing restorations. So I hope this addresses your question. There's another question uh, 
about when restoring anterior guidance. How do you restore crossover? Okay, I, I imagine you are telling me now about a situation where upper incisors are uh, lingual to the lowers. If that is right, please let me know. And of course, in this case, uh, there is not much you can do. It's not a very common situation. I don't have any experience with that, but any crossover situation maybe should be addressed by uh, other means, which is maybe orthodontics, maybe surgery uh, before you start. Uh, now, if you have a crossover situation and you want to maintain the crossover situation and the, need, the teeth need restorations, I see no reason why you would not be able to just restore them in crossover because remember, with porcelain veneers, the restored tooth is as strong as the unrestored tooth and maybe even stronger. So there should not be a problem with that. And there's another question about does the IDS process cause irritation or smearing to the gingival sulcus which might interfere with tissue integrity during impression? No, um, as you have seen, when the margin is indented, usually you, you, you are very careful. You must do the immediate denting sealing in the presence of a deflection cord. And the deflection cord is basically your barrier to the procedure. Uh, the priming step will infuse the, inf the deflection cord and the gingiva a little bit. And the primers will uh, do a little bit of bleaching of the gingiva. That is 100% reversible. The bonding agent, you don't want to apply the bonding agent over the margin. You stay slightly short of the margin. And, and with, if you do that, there is no problem. There is, will no, not be any interference with tissue integrity. Normally, I show dynamic movies about that to show you how I do it, which would be much more illustrative than my words right now. But I hope this answers your, your question. We have a last question. On the case where uh, we did the composite buildup, did we leave the crown margin on the composite? So I don't remember showing a crown, but maybe you mean the restoration margin as, as even the porcelain margin on the composite. Yes, when we have, it is true that they, there was a case with an endodontically treated tooth that was extensively damaged on the palatal. I show you in this, the palatal surface was essentially restored with composite and the facial aspect was prepared like a regular veneer. And ap actually, absolutely true, the proximal aspect of the restoration was placed in, within the existing uh, composite. Uh, this is true. Okay, I think we have uh, addressed and answered all questions. And I want to thank everybody for attending this. Uh